The other day I took a quick spin up near Old Forge, a blue sky day, and really the leaves at the peak, beautiful, beautiful leaves every autumn. You know why in autumn the leaves fall from the trees? Because the leaves are like you and I. They're very sentimental. Once a year they like to get back to their roots. <laughs> Not one person you know, you're a good-looking group, but you're just not. <laughs> anyway, let's take a quick look at the gospel. What's it all about? Well, Jesus tells this parable story. He's talking to the big shots of the Jewish temple religion, and he's upset with them because they, they're not really producing the good fruit of God, of faith. They're doing their own thing to advance themselves. And he says there was a vineyard, and the ones who were supposed to be working there weren't responsible. They didn't do their duty. They, they were shortchanging the owner. They weren't upholding their end of the deal. They were going to take the grape for themselves. They were even going to kill the son of the owner. Of course, in the gospel, that refers to the vineyard is God's creation or the church, we might say. The owner is God, the Father. The Son who was killed, the only Son of the owner, is our blessed Lord himself. And he uses this story, and he's simply pointing out to the leaders of the, of the religion of his time that they, they're not upholding their end of the deal. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And at the end, he says, it will be given to others. Of course, the early Christian community having this gospel, it means them, the followers of Jesus. To them would be the work of the vineyard, of cult God's faith. So what's it have to do with you and I today? Well, we all have responsibilities. We, we have to take care of. Uh, parents are responsible for their, for their kids. Teachers are responsible for their students. So maybe a brother and sister, a, an older brother is responsible, kind of watches out for his little sister. You have a good friend who's in trouble. They need a ride to the doctor once a week. I mean, we're used to it. We've been entrusted with responsibilities, and the proof is in the pudding. If we didn't do what we're supposed to do, if we didn't uphold our end of the deal, well, people would look and say, you were given a responsibility, you didn't do it. You didn't do it, you failed the test. And really, when you apply it to our faith as Catholic friends of Jesus, Christians, in this community, this household of faith called the church, the parish, well, we have been entrusted with certain duties. We are the stewards of the church, the guardians of God's good creation as well. Pope Francis wrote a beautiful encyclical, Laudate Si, which is uh, in praise of God. Pope Francis is right on, on the wagon saying, listen, we got to protect creation. We got to protect creation. This old world has got some problems. We got to see what we can do to preserve it. But I'm thinking more of life in the church, in the parish. And a lot of Catholics, not a lot, but I think too many, still, they think of, of me and they, like the church. They don't see themselves as the stewards, the workers. They don't see the parish as their vineyard, that they're the caretakers. They say, well, let the professional, let the priest, the deacon, let a nun do it, you know, the bishop, somebody. There's a lot of Catholics, they enjoy going to Mass, they love their faith, their sacraments, their devotions, but they still don't get it, that we are all called to be responsible. We've been entrusted with this vineyard, this household of faith. Sometimes on Christmas, you know, afternoon, Christmas Eve, somebody will call the rectory, I'll answer the phone, they'll go, who's this? I'll go, yeah, Father. And they'll say, are they, are they going to have midnight mass this year? And I go, you mean, are, are we? What do you mean, they? Well, you know, it's your parish, it's our parish. Are, why not say, are we going to have midnight mass? Somebody will say, what is this every year, this hope appeal? You know, why we got to do, why we got to pitch in for this hope appeal? Because the vineyard 
is bigger than this parish or that parish. <laughs> the vineyard is, you know, the seven counties of central New York, the Catholic faith in this part of the world. It's our vineyard. We've been entrusted with the care of it. So sometimes, too, people will say, well, you know, Father, we haven't been at church lately because now the kids' sports started on Sunday. We got hockey, we got soccer, we got this or that. And I'd like to say, but wait a minute, you're supposed to be the guardians of the faith, the caretakers of, of the church. So what are your priorities? What I know it's tough. Kids, you know, sports on Sundays. But we lose a lot of families for these months now when the kids aren't here and the parents aren't here because of that. Which is the more important vineyard? The vineyard of the faith or, you know, I don't know, the hockey rink. You know what I mean? So it's something to think about. And at the end of that gospel, our blessed Lord says, well, it's going to be taken from you, you leaders of the Jewish temple religion, because you're not coming through. You're not taking your responsibilities seriously. And so it will be given to others. And there arose the Christian community after our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. And so they were given the task of caring for the vineyard. And so are we. It began in the blessed waters of bar baptism, reinforced in our confirmation, supported every time we meet Jesus in communion. We are called to be the caretakers of the household of faith, which you could call the vineyard. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.